What's up, Crime Fam? So we are officially four weeks out from my meet. I'm gonna take you through my entire workout today. We got an SPD day. We got four of these heavy strength SPD days left before the meet. We're gonna go through squats, and then later we're also gonna talk about the three cues that have helped my deadlift the most. So we're gonna cover everything I do that I think is really essential, especially to a conventional deadlift. Now again, if you haven't seen my squat video on this, where I talk about the three cues that really improved my squat the most, go watch that video if you haven't. As always, these cues are specific to me. They may, not be, they may not be what you need to focus on in the gym, but there's something that I think helped me a lot and also can help a lot of people universally. So we'll take you through all the deadlift cues later. We're also gonna show you what I'm doing on the bench press and kind of what my training looks like from a peaking standpoint about four weeks out from a meet because this is really the peaking block where I do mine a little bit different than most people. So we're gonna take you through the whole workout, warming up on squats right now. Hoping for about 562 for a triple today, but we'll see. I didn't get much sleep last night. I had some stomach issues, ate some bad food, so we'll kind of play it by ear. Okay, so building up on squats, like I said, triple at eight today. I'm really focused on trying to actually get my grip a little wider and my hand very flush against the squat bar. So the squat bar is all about controlling whip. Even though the bar is thicker, a big misconception is that this bar whips less than say a, a Lyco or like a, a stiff 29 millimeter bar. That's not true. This bar whips more because it's so long, the weights are displaced out to the sides. So because it's so wide and long, this thing whips on your back so much and at max loads, it can fold you over really quickly. So for me, it's all about a wider grip on, on a squat bar and really controlling that whip and almost pushing my triceps up into the bar and getting my hand flush with it. I'm gonna hit this for a single and then take one more jump and then probably hit my top set. pounds for a triple, probably RP8 with really safe form. If you guys have been following me, you know I tore my adductor about two weeks ago doing a split set. I'll show that clip real quick. Uh, I rehabbed the adductor extremely fast. I'm really good at rehabbing these tears because I've probably had eight of them over the, the course of the last like five or six years. And so I, I'm already back to training full bore. I had to skip my back downs because I could tell there's a little tension down there and I want to save uh, my, my adductor, so to say, for the deadlift, make sure I get in a good deadlift top set, get in my bench work. So I'm trying to salvage this meat prep. It happened at probably the worst time. We're doing pretty good. So 562 for a triple matches my all-time best on squat. And it was pretty easy. And to be able to do that off really not training hard the last couple of weeks because of the adductor is amazing for me. So squat's in a good place. So moving on to deadlifts, this is an SBD day, squat, bench, and deadlift. But I always do deadlifts first because it keeps my back fresher. From all of the arching on bench press, my back gets really fried, especially when I'm doing a lot of volume on it. So I actually start with deadlifts first and then I go to bench press after. It's just a personal preference of mine. So I'm gonna take you guys through exactly what I do on the deadlift, the three things that have helped me probably more than anything in the last few years on my deadlift. Okay, moving on to some deads now. So what I cue, the first thing that's really helped out my deadlift is cueing a protracted or reached upper back with an extended and tight low back. So what I mean by that is essentially I set up where I'm reaching, trying to actually actively protract my scapula. So I don't try to pack my shoulders back and down. It's like the worst cue for deadlifting. That just makes your arms really short. Instead, I really protract, reach, and depress, and get it locked in and long. This gives me leverage on the deadlift because my arms are longer. But the problem with this is when you just cue that, you tend to flex over a lot. Some people might be able to pull heavy deadlifts like that for me. If I flex over too much, especially my low back, 
my hips can't come through up to the bar. So what I like to cue along with this is a tight extended low back. So essentially in a dramatized version of what I'm doing, I'm trying to arch my low back out while flexing my upper back. Now, in reality, I can't actually arch my low back because I got a belt on it. There's no way I can enter that much extension at the bottom. But that's what I cue is I actually cue to extend that low back tight. That way my hips can extend the bar very well. If my low back gives, my hips reach posterior tilt, which is a function of the glutes and that puts them in end range contraction. Therefore, they cannot contract to the bar efficiently. That's why people who hold really rounded backs have a hard time at lockout. So for me, I keep the low back nice and tall, or it's nice and erect and extended with that upper back where I get leverage. So this gives me the best of both worlds. Leverage in the upper back, longer arms, kind of like a crane. Low back is nice and tight so my hips can function. So the way I set this up on the bar is I'm gonna cue all the protraction up top and then I'm gonna bring that down to the bar and then you're gonna see right before I go, I extend and lock my low back while keeping the upper back protracted, pull the slack and I go. Let's watch this one. So protraction, slight depression, big pressing. So I do that really fast because I can't really do it slow with my slack ball style. Well, I'll try to put a slow-mo on the screen. At the bottom, I really extend and lock that back and then I slack pull and go and I hold that position. So the majority of my tension and positions created up top, I bring that down to the bar, I set the last piece, which is my grip in my back, and then I pull the slack and go. This has helped my deadlift tremendously because it gives me leverage while ensuring I have stability of the pelvis and my glutes can operate how they need to operate for a proper lockout. There you go. Yes. All right, guys, so built up to my top set, I hit 661 pounds for a triple, which is amazing. After the adductor tear, I had to detrain my body, basically, to get through the pain. And so building back up to those top sets, I basically matched two lifetime PRs a day. That's huge for me. Uh, adductors feeling pretty healthy. I felt it a little bit on the top set, but I think we're in the clear now. Uh, so I wanted to focus on that before I went to cue number two. So now cue number two, that's really helped out my deadlift. I've dropped the weight down to just two plates so I can kind of talk you through this, is really gripping my feet externally and rotating them and rooting them into the ground. So a lot of people overlook this, especially for a conventional deadlift, but a really good way to get very strong hip extension is to twist your feet to the ground. So when I set up on here, I'm actually gonna point my toes a little bit in from what feels the most natural to me. So normally, I would have my toes kind of flared out to about here. But in this case, I'm gonna bring them in a little bit, right about there, and then I'm gonna twist and grip into the floor. So my feet are almost like talons that are like gripping like this externally and rooting and, and hugging the floor with my toes. And I feel full foot pressure here. I actually do this more in my deadlift than I do in the squat. The, the reason why is that active hip extension and torque is really gonna let my glutes fire through. The more we externally rotate, the more those glutes are gonna function in our pull, especially with my pulling style, keeping my low back really extension dominant. So when I pull this deadlift up, essentially what I'm doing the whole way up is just twisting those feet and getting my knees to open up. So if done correctly, instead of seeing the knees kind of cave in like that when I break, it really keeps them budged out to the sides and then hips locking through. Now, when I don't do this, if I just leave my feet kind of open and flat, even if they're firm on the ground, 
you're gonna see a lot of the time the knees kicking in when you go to break, and that's how you're gonna flex over, lose that extension dominance, and then you're gonna have to fight your way to the top. Some people can actually pull better like that. Some people do a little bit better biasing flexion in their back in a pull. That's not me. For my extension dominance, especially in that low back, I just try to stay as tight as possible. And that external grip I get into my feet really allows for my hips to kick in and it blends really well with my style. So bring the feet in slightly, twist into the ground. Okay, so cue number three is gonna be pulling the slack out of the bar with a leveraged slack. Rest. So I have a ton of videos on this. I'm gonna link the main one, the one that I think is the best in the description box. I want you to watch that because I'm gonna give you the crash course here in this video, but it's an extremely nuanced, complex explanation that deserves a lot more time than this vlog can really manifest in order to do it justice. So I want you guys to go watch that video, but essentially what I'm trying to do is, is cheat the floor of the deadlift. I do this by essentially pulling some of the weight up off the ground and leaning back into a higher start position than I could ever otherwise start with in my deadlift by using the slack of the deadlift bar, especially kind of to the advantage of it. So if you actually watch my warmups on 495, I pulled so much slack up off the ground that I actually lifted the bar up early. This happens sometimes on my warm-up sets because they're so light that I accidentally pulled too much slack out. Now, usually I intend to pull less out at those lighter weights, but when I'm revving up for a really heavy top set, sometimes I get a little overzealous. The goal is to pull out just enough slack for each subsequent weight jump. So I'm gonna show you what three reds would look like, which is gonna be a lot less slack that I would pull out than say 700 plus pounds. So when I set up, my goal is to go down to the bar and when I'm ready to go, I'm gonna pull up on this bar and bend it to the ceiling. So here's relaxed, here's bent, okay? So I'm actually literally almost picking some of that weight up off the ground like that. Now, if you do it too much, that's not gonna help you. You shouldn't actually lift the entire weight up off the ground. But you pick up maybe 50% of it in like kind of a stiff-legged position and then I lean back with that pulling more out on the way down and initiate the lift, almost like a deadlift jack with my body just wedging up into position. So when done correctly, it'll look very smooth. And you can see there, on light weights, I almost fall back sometimes because I use so much momentum leaning back as I go up. Now I want you to go watch the video on this because if you really want to get this down, even when I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, it takes me months to teach them this because it's so unnatural. Now there's other ways to pull the slack out. This is my way, it's what I call a leveraged slack pull. Other people just do a tension slack pull where they create tightness and then pull up. Mine is actually kind of using the weight against itself to put my body into a higher start position than I could otherwise achieve without pulling that much weight up and bending the bar that high towards the ceiling. The key is to literally pick some of that weight up and then lean back with it without losing what you picked up in that start position. That, hands down, has made my deadlift more consistent and stronger than any other thing I've done with my deadlift. So I encourage you guys to go try it. Now we're gonna move on to bench press, show you what I'm doing there. Okay, building up here on bench press, uh, I got 308 loaded. I got a triple at eight. Now my bench press is PR'd every week for the last like, I don't know, five weeks or something. And last night I didn't get a lot of sleep. I had some stomach issues, got like four hours of sleep. Whenever my sleep gets shitty, I, I always feel really beat up the next day, even if like performance is high. So today my bench feels strong, but my joints feel like glass. So probably gonna take it easy today. Main cues I'm working on here are really getting an active, getting into active scapula retraction. So a lot of people think of scapular retraction, again, it's just like holding the shoulders pinned back and that's it. You gotta actively retract more and more as you come down. And then I actually slightly protract on the concentric. I talked about this in the last video, but I think this is a really big key for moderate grip bench pressers. Wide grip, they stay in their retraction kind of permanently. For guys in the moderate grip range to get that lockout to fire through, which is where you're gonna stick the most, you always gotta get a little bit of protraction, but just enough, and the more reps you do, the less you do that, if that makes sense. So on a max single, I'm gonna protract a lot more than say on like a set of five, because I need to stay in position for those subsequent reps. So just building up here, I'm probably gonna do triples all the way up. Ooh. 
Feel strong, that hurts. The only joke is my top set. <laughs> that was the best joke of the day. Okay guys, so I hit 353 for a triple, which is atrocious. Back in the day, that would have been a big top set. My pecs and elbows feel like glass right now. They feel like they're gonna shatter. No sleep always does that to me. Last week I hit a huge PR of 374 uh, for, or 375 for four reps. I'm gonna play that clip because then you guys can have some hype instead of this shitty set. So that was a huge PR, really clean. But today, after hitting that PR and then coming in on no sleep, body's not having it. This is the time to be responsible. So you might see that set and be like, oh, that looks really explosive. I can tell it's not the time to go up on the 353. So I'm gonna call it there, let my body kind of deload. That's the whole purpose of this week anyways, to take it a little easier before the final push. And uh, I'm gonna go down, do my back down sets, and uh, I'll, I'll probably film another little outro after that.